Okay, here we have uh, three meters. Uh, this is the original meter out of a rare World War II uh, OSS spy radio. And uh, it says 150 milliamps full scale. Here's an identical movement. Uh, it says model 909. And uh, you can see that the uh, the physical construction of the movement is the same as this one. This one appears to have a little uh, shunt wire inside. Uh, this one doesn't. But on the back, uh, it's got this big shunt uh, to allow it to be a, a 10 amp full scale meter. Uh, but you'll notice that the terminals of these two meters are considerably different. Uh, after you take the back off, I was just going to take the shunt off, but look at the uh, heavy uh, terminals that are part of this, uh, this meter, uh, which these don't possess. Uh, this third meter movement is physically different. This is a different meter than uh, the other two. So the task is to try to make a, a new shunt uh, for this meter <coughs> and uh, uh, change the meter face. Uh, the owner has supplied a, uh, a meter face with 150 milliamp uh, full scale uh, to replace it with. But we have to uh, calculate uh, the or measure the internal meter resistance and then calculate the, uh, the shunt and try to make it. But this is a different um, movement. Uh, it's got a different case. You see this, uh, this loops up like this and this goes uh, straight across. Uh, you look at the, uh, the armature inside and you see that there's a bar straight across with a little, with a little bearing. And uh, this one is a, uh, a, a, uh, a saddle shaped thing. It's entirely different. Uh, movement than this one. So uh, it's a pretty good chance that it's going to have a different uh, internal meter resistance and require calculating and manufacturing a different shunt. So the first thing I got to do uh, now that I've is to take this uh, case apart and uh, take a look at the uh, the movement and see if it's uh, uh, going to be amenable to what we're trying to do. I noticed that this thing has got a crack in the case already and so I wanted to photograph it uh, so that nobody says that I did this. So the other the other one seems to be undamaged so uh, we're gonna uh, take this back off of this thing and see what we find inside. Well it's pretty obvious that uh, this is a different meter movement with a very different magnet. Uh, no little uh, well I won't say it doesn't have a uh, a shunt but if it might uh, it might simply hit, that might be the um, uh, shunt wire uh, I don't think it has a swamping resistor. I'm not sure about this uh, thing in the front. It, uh, I hope it's not a spring. <laughs> but it's uh, pretty peculiar. This wire was originally soldered onto the adjustable part of the armature. You can see that the wire is broken off, so I think we got a non-functional meter here to begin with. The uh, Adjuster was not inserted in the uh, 
adjustable part of the armature so couldn't adjust it when you turned it with a screwdriver they just didn't put it back together right so I think we've got a broken a broken meter here at least so far as that should be soldered on there that's very delicate difficult work to do so we definitely got different meter movements, the same case. And uh, I'm about to go out and uh, look in my, I got a collection of about a hundred meters and see if I have a uh, meter like this. Uh, we may be chasing uh, unicorns here. Uh, there is a procedure for taking a meter like this and uh, connecting it to a variable power supply with a 10K resistor and then uh, running it up to full scale and being able to calculate the meter resistance. Uh, Taking this shunt off of here going to be very difficult. We may be uh, we may be trying to do the impossible here, and it may uh, sticking another meter movement in this case uh, may be a more appropriate way to uh, to get where we want to go. But we'll see. Well, here's the uh, shunt resistor for the hundred and 50 milliamp meter and it's pretty crude I I suspect somebody wound this on their home workbench so uh, that's interesting this uh, if you look at the way this is uh, done it looks doesn't look like this came out of a factory. Somebody, somebody did this, and uh, that's interesting. So this, I think, is a swamping resistor here. Um, and you can see it's got a big magnet, very big heavy magnet that's part of this uh, movement. So I'm going to take the other one out of the case and compare them, see if they're physically the same uh, before we go much farther with this. So here's the other meter movement. So now we've got three different meter movements. And uh, this one does not say that it's a Type 909 on it anywhere. Uh, it's got a different style of armature. Here's what I think is the little swamping resistor uh, down here. And uh, it's just, just completely different. So... We'd have to uh, measure the meter resistance with the shunt off of this one and see what it is, and then uh, if it's a, you know it's a one milliamp meter or microamp meter or some other thing, we have to measure, uh, calculate and fabricate a shunt for it to make it uh, read 150 mils full scale. So uh, this is what we're dealing with, uh, three uh, different meter movements that we're trying to make duplicate and function this thing. Uh, this case is never going to be uh, exactly the same as this one, it just fits the right same hole.
Okay, so what we're doing is uh, <coughs> trying to uh, duplicate uh, uh, this uh, 150 milliamp scale uh, ammeter for uh, little OSS spy radios from World War II. And uh, this is the meter that was uh, sent that was supposed to be the original. And uh, what we see here is that this uh, this coiled wire, which carries the current to the uh, to the armature right here, uh, is unsoldered. I have a feeling that this movement is not any good anyway, but uh, we're going to try to uh, solder that back on there and uh, and see if the movement is good. The movement doesn't have a normal uh, motion, so I'm pretty sure that armature is shot. These two uh, that are marked uh, 10 amps, I uh, cut the uh, cut the uh, shunts off of the back of them and uh, tested them uh, with the meter. Just ran a little current through them with the ohm meter, and uh, we get some deflection, so we know that they're okay. So uh, I'm going to try to repair this uh, meter and see if we can get it to do that also but I have a feeling that uh, this meter is shot unfortunately and uh, then we'll uh, we'll put these uh, take a 10,000 ohm resistor and uh, put it in series with the meter and another ammeter uh, give it uh, 10 or 12 volts and uh, uh, calculate the uh, the uh, meter resistance and uh, by measuring the uh, the current across the meter at full scale, just run the voltage up till it goes to full scale, and measure the uh, uh, voltage across the meter in millivolts, and then calculate uh, the needed resistor. And uh, these two meters are very similar, so the the uh, the shunt uh, for one should work for the other. Um, this one I don't know, but Anyway, I've got it in the pan of ice here, uh, so I can hold it steady. It's like a brain surgery trying to uh, um, get this wire soldered. I can't get this wire to take any solder yet, uh, but I was trying to hold it in my hand. So I've got it in the pan of ice, and we'll see what we can do. Okay, so now I've bent the wire back around until it's on this little tab on the end of the adjuster, and I'm going to try to... Uh, just put a tiny little bit of heat on there and see if it will uh, will bond. Well, you can see that it's bonded on there. I turned the electricity off to the uh, soldering iron before I did it. I was afraid that uh, magnetism from the uh, heating element might affect the meter. So anyway, we got that tack soldered on there and now we'll run a little current through it and see if it'll work. Okay, I've got the meter set up uh, with a dropping resistor and a power supply and we see that the meter does work. So it's got a homemade shunt in it which is uh, dubious but the meter movement does work so we'll be able to make it go. When I started uh, this project uh, I thought I was going to have to do a lot of calculate uh, calculations using algebra and uh, figure out the internal meter resistance and all that stuff in order to be able to figure out what the shunt resistor is but it turns out that it's an awful lot easier than that. Uh, you make this little uh, setup here. Uh, you put your power supply here, a positive lead there, and negative lead there. And uh, you run the power supply up until you get this uh, your meter up to full scale. Then you take a, a little digital um, voltmeter that can measure millivolts, and you measure the voltage across the meter at full scale. You take that number and you put it up here. Uh, voltage at full scale. Then you take the number that you want your meter to read. In this case it's going to be 150 
milliamps. So that's the number that here that you put in here, and this is the actual current that it takes to get the meter to deflect to full scale with no shot on it. So um, you're going to take uh, and insert a uh, a uh, milliammeter uh, in here so that you're measuring the current that's going through here when the meter is at full scale and you put that number uh, in here and it turns out that my meter is 5 milliamps full scale which is peculiar uh, usually there are 100 microamps or 1 milliamp or 100 milliamps but it, this one is 5 milliamps it took 43 volts uh, was the uh, voltage across the meter at full scale. Uh, we want 150 milliamps uh, calibration on the meter. We've got 5 milliamps so we subtract those. So the difference is 145 milliamps that has to go through the shunt and you need 43 millivolts across the meter. You do the division and here's what you come up with. 0.297 basically 0.3 of an ohm. Now how are you going to make your meter shunt? You're going to go to a wire table that you find on the uh, uh, find on the internet, the American Wire Gauge, and you find out that two feet, that a foot of number 32 wire is 160 milliohms per foot. So you need about two feet of that. Number 35 American Wire Gauge is 300, uh, 329 milliohms per foot. Uh, just about what we need. So uh, you can use make a winder shunt out of one of those two things. Uh, clearly, this wire is going to carry more current. Might be uh, might be better if you don't mind winding uh, two uh, two feet of it to make your shunt. Got one of our meters uh, deflecting to full scale and 43 millivolts across the meter for full scale. So that uh, that'll let us calculate the uh, the dropping resistor or the uh, the shunt resistor uh, for that meter and uh, now we'll test the other one. So now we've uh, measured these uh, 42 millivolts full scale and 43 uh, millivolts full scale. So the same shunt's going to work uh, for both of them. And uh, that's good news. When I started uh, this project, uh, I thought I was going to have to do a lot of calculate, uh, calculations using algebra and uh, figure out the internal meter resistance and all that stuff in order to be able to figure out what the shunt resistor is but it turns out that it's an awful lot easier than that. Uh, you make this little uh, setup here uh, you put your power supply here, positive lead there and negative lead there and uh, you run the power supply up until you get this uh, your meter up to full scale. Then you take a, a little digital um, voltmeter that can measure millivolts and you measure the voltage across the meter at full scale. You take that number and you put it up here uh, voltage at full scale. Then you take the number that you want your meter to read. In this case it's going to be 150 milliamps. So that's the number that here that you put in here and this is the actual current that it takes to get the meter to deflect to full scale with no shot on it. So um, you're going to take uh, and insert a uh, a uh, milliammeter uh, in here so that you're measuring the current that's going through here when the meter is at full scale and you put that number uh, in here and it turns out that my meter is 5 milliamps full scale which is peculiar. Uh, usually there are 100 microamps or 1 milliamp or 100 milliamps but it, this one is 5 milliamps. It took 43 volts uh, was the uh, voltage across the meter at full scale. Uh, we want 150 milliamps uh, 
calibration on the meter. We've got 5 milliamps, so we subtract those. So the difference is 145 milliamps that has to go through the shunt, and you need 43 millivolts across the meter. You do the division, and here's what you come up with, 0.297, basically 0.3 of an ohm. Now how are you going to make your meter shunt? You're going to go to a wire table that you find on the uh, uh, find on the internet the American wire gauge and you find out that two feet that a foot of number 32 wire is 160 milliohms per foot so you need about two feet of that number 35 American wire gauge is 300, uh, 329 milliohms per foot uh, just about what we need so uh, you can use make a winder shunt out of one of those two things uh, Clearly this wire is going to carry more current, might be, uh, might be better if you don't mind winding uh, two, uh, two feet of it to make your shot.